Well, hello, and thank you very much for joining us on today's podcast. We have a good, good dear friend of mine, Dr. Scott Young, that many of you know, I'm sure, uh, virally, as he is an expert in many things, particularly in the field of Nesra and Jesra, and he's doing it from a Christian standpoint, which we always love here. And so we're going to be getting his musings on many different aspects of Nesra, where we are in the past to present day. If you are new to the channel, please do like, subscribe, and share as it helps the channel grow and let others know about the knowledge you are acquiring. Dr. Scott, thanks for joining us on the podcast. Hi, uh, how are you doing, man? It's good to see you, brother. So for those who don't know, um, Dr. <laughs> Scott had me on his show about three years ago, and we talked a lot, what was interesting about it, um, biblical references to Nasara. And obviously it doesn't say Nasara just aren't in the Bible, but it does have inferences that point. You'd be surprised if it did. Oh, uh, yeah, I know. Maybe there's some version we don't know about, but... <laughs> But it does very specifically point to a lot of the tenets that Nessera and Jessera represent. That was the what we were driving at. Um, but uh, Dr. Scott, we're going to talk about a lot of things on today's show, and obviously we'll have you back next month. We are, thankfully have you pre-booked ahead of time. We've been trying to do this, folks, for a while. Um, you know, the enemy has gotten away with scheduling and other personal conflicts, but God always makes a way, and here we are. So. Uh, Dr. Scott, if you could briefly give the folks, you know, you and I know, and I, I think a lion's share of our audience know, but there's always new people coming into the movement uh, and, and to realizing different levels of truth. Can you kind of differentiate for people the correct Nessera versus the incorrect Nessera so they can keep it straight? Yeah. It's funny, you know, you say Nessera, I say Nasara. Uh, you know, it's, and by the way, guys, that is an acronym, okay? So there's a there's a word in audiology called tinnitus, which means ringing in the ears. It's a junk term. If you're in the West Coast, you say tinnitus. If you're in the East Coast, you say tinnitus. And the other side, like, thinks you're saying it the wrong way. Dude, you can say it any way you want to, okay? Doesn't matter. I had people, like, get all mad at me at that one. Um Nasara actually, um, when people get too blocked out about Nasara issues, like um, it, it says this thing and says that, and, and I'm like, calm down just a little bit because um, the, the basis of Nasara is the white hats taking over the Fed. I mean, um, Q actually references gold will destroy the fed you know when i get into when i get into this this point is that when we take away the fed and we take away the irs and we we start seeing um correct levels of election through you know the qfs the quantum financial system so quantum voting which is basically just like you might walk i'm just saying as an idea you might walk in with your app and that identifies you in that way um, and there would be accountability in that kind of way. There's privatized circumstances. This is all, these are all part of it. What's funny is that, you know, there's, there's the stabilization versus, you know, reformation and there's all these little wordings kind of thing. And, and I, I kind of look at it this way in uh, the second cares act, which is around April of 2020, um, I have a friend of mine who passed away. She was an IRS agent and she actually researched the snot out of these things. She was not just a research, I mean, the IRS agent. She took what Congress wrote and had to write it into um, IRS codes so that they knew how to how to direct the funds out, right? And um, and like all the research that I do comes from banking, uh, bankers who would start coming to me you know, IRS agents, I mean, all these different kind of people all over the world telling me stuff, right? And at first I was doing my own research for just for me. And that's what you need to do as a patriot. I mean, if you want to do what John does, you know, as a truther, that's cool. Um, but the reality is a patriot researches, okay? So one of the things, so we we talk about the basis of this. People who don't believe in this are, or they think it's a fake or what scam point, I say, do you believe that the Fed is evil? Yes. Great. Do you believe the IRS is, you know, uh, illegally done? Yes. Okay. Do you believe in a gold back standard that we can have a real type of money? Yes. You're there, you know, and so... The thing that happened in 2020 is that 
Trump took the second CARES Act in that 1,200-page document, and actually it was pre-written. Most people don't understand this. And, and my friend, um, Brand had looked at the sucker, and she had, and I went, that's not her exact name, but I, I want to protect her in this way. And, and Fran had looked at this, this particular sucker, and she said, I've seen acts all the time that come out. And they have misspellings, miswordings, especially if they're a thousand page document, right? And that thousand, this a thousand page document was written for the first CARES Act. Three weeks later, the second CARES Act was 1,200 pages. Then it was a 1,400 page. And then there was a, I don't remember the number after that. And you're going, you can't come out with that amount of documentation without it being pre-written or just thrown together with all kinds of crap in there. But she said, as she read the first one and the second one, they were perfect. They had references that couldn't have been in there. This was pre-planned. Mm -hmm. So this is part of the White Hat thing. And so what they did is they sublimated the Fed underneath the Treasury. And there was a big joke at the time that, welcome your new Treasury. I mean, the Fed chairman, Donald Trump. And it was like, all they're all pissed off about that. And, and from that point in time, when everyone else was just like, like me, and everyone else was like, what's the Great Reset? You know, I'd heard about Bernie Sanders, but I didn't know the words that he was using, right? The Great Reset thing. And yet, the cool thing is, is they killed the Great Reset before it even got started. It's like you're playing a chess game, and you flick over the queen, like in the second step. Like you're going, wait a second, I thought you were just taking my pawn out. No, mm. we're taking out your queen, and then we're going to take out your king, and then you're going to act like you're playing, even though you don't have any real pieces. That's what these idiots are doing. So at that same time frame, to answer a, a little different pattern, is that they started putting this secondary information about uh, a guy named Shaw and all these other weird things out there. And what I'm going to tell you is it's lie. It, it's filled with nothing. And they throw it all over the channels, right? And mm -hmm. the reality is, is that people don't even understand the Great Reset. So they don't understand what Nasara is about. And, and so the reality is, is that you have to take some macroeconomics, which John has some of that background too. And you got to take macroeconomics, look at what's good for the country and what is historical. And when you see that, there you go. And, and we, we start having, you know, some realities. But remember, too, you know, the devil comes to kill, steal, and destroy. And when he's got nothing, he's going to lie, which is part of the, the stealing, okay, in essence. Yeah. I mean, lies' essence is a stealing point. So that just kind of gives you a little bit different way of looking at that without getting too much into the minutia with that. Yeah, no, that's great. Thanks, Dr. Scott. Excellent summation of that. And yeah, I, I used to say Nasara, so I'm saying Nasara. It's like you said, semantics at the end of the day, same. Yeah, I don't care. You know, Tenetus, tinnitus, we could do it a hundred ways, right? Yeah, you, you get to the same end point. How you get there is another matter. <clears throat> right. And you know, like you, what you were saying is so accurate because it's like Sun Tzu. The battle is won before it's even begun. You know, they've already checkmated them. So. Right. And that's that's the way you do this because... We have had the fits and starts, and the two major fits and starts for really Nassar to roll out was 9-11. Mm -hmm. Second one was a weirder time frame that no one even knows about. I'm going to do a video on this in the future. It near future is the quantitative easing time frame of 2008 and 2009. And those were two ways that they tried to bring in Nassara but the cabal stopped it and there were issues that happened. So really this has to be underneath them. They don't even understand what's happening. Hmm. It's true. No, you're absolutely right. Um, so there's so many points we can touch on. We only have obviously a limited one of time. I'm going to bring you back next month to continue this, but I, I, you and I've talked about it and I've seen your videos on it. Of course I concur. Uh, there's lots of people, questions people have in regards to Nasara, Jasara. You know, we know that wars have to stop. All wars are banker wars. We know that we're going back to an asset-backed currency. We see what the BRICs are doing. We see what's happening with Community Bank in New York. I don't know if you saw it, Scott, but I, oh, yeah. I, I, 
I reported this morning that U.S. Well, Santa Surfing actually reported it, and then I caught up with it that a U.S. bank last quarter lost 44 percent of their earnings share. So we're seeing them decimated commercial real estate. So we're seeing elements of Nassar right side. So one of the first questions I always see people come up with. So because you know it, we've been trained and in, in, in inculcated in such a way to think of ourselves first, but yet be working for someone else to make them rich. It's sort of right. paradoxical. Right. And my question being is people always say, well. Well, what about, you know, we know debt forgiveness, but, you know, am I going to get a monthly income? And you've differentiated about UBI. Sure. Could you just touch a little bit on the differentiations between the UBI and actually getting, you know, monies back through the system? Yeah, and I think I, I think there's, you know, when when I, I say UBI and then someone goes, like, they go ballistic on me. And I, I'm like, y do you understand when you eliminate the IRS you basically give every single person who's paying in that kind of standard point almost a 30% raise or more right away. You kill off capital gains taxes. So for instance, I'm dealing with this with my father-in-law passed away a week and a half. What we're dealing with is his bank CD. It's an IRA. And so I'm having to figure out how to like mitigate that stuff so it doesn't affect it, right? I mean, you know, so there's all these little features of IRS taxation. When people say tax, you got to be careful because are we talking about an excise tax? Are we talking about, you know, IRS taxation? Or are we talking about sales tax? Sales tax mm -hmm. and excise tax are legal taxes, but the IRS shoved underneath us this little this little taxation point. So that's one thing that you actually do. The second level of taxation and the way that they steal from you is inflation. Mm -hmm. I mean, like every day you hear these idiots that talk and they're arguing about 6% inflation. I'm like, dude, you don't get it. Inflation isn't just... Um, a, a, com, a conversation that, that has been done in the past, they have deleted oil from inflation's numbers. Oil is the basis of the U.S. dollar. It was part of the Bretton Woods Conference in 1944. It's, it's, they wanted to have some basis standard points, right? And, and, you know, because they were going off of the gold standard more specifically in, in 32, and then they went off of the international gold standard in 71 and 72. But they always like do that with these false flags, right? So they cover themselves all the time with this. Now, <clears throat> when you have inflation, when you look at inflation right now, I'm going to tell you something that I have been researching. And, and uh, if you go back and look, like the debt, the national debt. And you just calculate it over years and you'll see, you can even do Wikipedia, which does a nice job on, on, on this particular thing. Um, you know, general things that they're okay. But, and they'll show you the, the rate and up and down depending upon the president that might be in, right? Eisenhower versus Reagan or whatever. But guess what happens as soon as 2020 occurs? The numbers like don't make any sense. The reality is, is that as soon as the Fed was sublimated underneath the Treasury, the, the cabal has gone completely off the rails. And so they've taken out 10 to $13 trillion every single, I mean, every single time we would look at this, four-year period of time, the, the debt rises $100 trillion in 100 days. Mm -hmm. I mean, and so you're going... When does it become unsustainable? And so what happens is inflation isn't eight, nine percent. It's probably in the 40 to 60 percent range. There are nations that are saying uh, that that are joining BRICS left and right. And by the way, John and I both know this. BRICS is really 209 nations. No. Don't think it's 60, okay? No. Because no. BRICS, and John will teach this quite a but dramatically and very good is that BRICS is just Sara. That's for each one of the nations. It's for sovereignty for each one of the nations. And I'm picky about this because some people will say like Australia and Canada is going to be a part as of the, of the coalition of nations under America. And I'm going, you know, I have a real problem with that. 
Canada has never been free, ever. Mm. I mean, they've never, ever. If you look through their history, they've always been someone pressing down on them. Australia started as a country, was a prison, um, in, in essence, I'll say a prison planet, like in yeah. sci-fi terms, right? The Aborigines, yeah. And, and and so they put they put their British prisoners along with the Aborigines because they didn't like the place, right? So they've never been free. And and Jasara is actually about each one of those nations not being stolen from in their currency, okay? And that they can actually self-govern. And when you see that kind of thing, that's a level of sovereignty. So the QFS, the quantum financial system, will be for each one of those nations. And so as we as we go along, we have to see that some of those nations are sitting at 175 percent um, of their uh, of uh, inflation. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> On top of that, did you know that the Fed is running at a hundred and fifty billion dollar loss? If you look through the history of, of the Fed, they have always run at basically a zero some gain. In essence, what they are is a pass-through type of organization. It's a sovereign organization that no one understands. Uh, the Clinton Foundation is a sovereign organization, but the Fed was too, which means they're not even, they're, it's, it's a constitutional level. And I had a chance to be a part of a sovereign organization. And I was like, well, what are we doing? <laughs> I didn't yeah. get it. Yeah. And the sovereign organization that the Fed is, always wants to be just, they don't want to have any profits, just like nonprofit organizations. But they've always run at, you know, little, little tiny in numbers, and you'll see it go up and down, right? And then you look around 22 to 23, it goes oh, off the charts. But how come Russia is sitting at $90 billion dollars of excess just based upon their currency through their treasury. It's because they already went gold backed. We're sitting on, on an unsustainable thing. And so Nasara, in essence, is a bankruptcy of the cabal and the perfect person to run a bankruptcy is someone who's actually been through it, which is Trump. Yep. Cause he's been through bankruptcy because the cabal hated his guts they wouldn't he wouldn't take their money a mafia king actually the old one stated i tried many times to get him underneath the mafia control he wouldn't do it yep so what nasara really is is a bankruptcy and so when john was talking about all these little things those are bankruptcy events but it's not to to close it out and you're going to lose all your money and like all this freaked out kind of thing right yeah you're the QFS covers you. It has already mirrored your money, okay? So you don't have to worry about that. Now, on, under the UBI kind of conversation, you know, some people will say, and I, I, I'm, I'm okay with them them saying, well, how they believe on that. That some people will say, well, you're going to get millions of dollars because of the bond money. How they're how they're presenting that is that they see a few features in the Nasara stuff of payback. Of different of different groups, those groups are the Indians, and there are pre-existing groups. I mean, you know, the American Indians, the farmers, and and some of those pre-existing groups. And there's these things called fines and penalties. Those are uh, essentially what those things are. So they're a group of people that under um, before Nasara actually goes, they actually have to be paid off um, proportionally. Uh, proportionally, those are very small amount that happens and then gold back occurs. But then some people have inserted, well, that money should come to us. And the reason why is your social security number is has has been um, hijacked by the Department of Transportation, which exists in Puerto Rico. Mm -hmm. well, why aren't they a state? Like, why is Hawaii a state and Puerto Rico isn't a state? You go, mm -hmm. it's because they didn't want it part of America, just like they don't want D.C., to be a state. And yet DC has the Washington Caps, the Redskins, I'll still call them Redskins. Uh, yeah, okay? yeah. <laughs> and and they have uh the old bullets, whatever they're called now. Um Wizards. And, yeah. What's that? Washington Wizards. Wizards, yeah. There you go. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then you have their baseball team, uh 
blanked out here. Nationals. Oh, the nationals. nationals. How, how come a city that's really that small has all those different um, teams? And you go, it's because they got money up the wazoo with that. And so they have been stealing from that and they've been stealing from you. And that's why they keep you on the voter rolls and all this other stuff. But Nasara actually stipulates that they're going to cancel out the sale of the people. Mm -hmm. So that's a canceling, just like we're canceling debt. And so I don't see that kind of thing out there. But, but by the way, when you guys see it, your money is now going to be worth dramatic numbers. Some people predict a lower amount, like it might go up only to $2,500 for, for an ounce. But we're also talking about a potential of, of them recalculating under grams. Uh, so there might be a different way of, of recalculating under a metric system where we can mm -hmm. kind of do those smaller numbers, right? Mm -hmm. But let's just use ounces. So some people want to say $2,500. I kind of look at the number. I think it's probably around $5,000. Some people go into... Now, crazier numbers I, I don't really want to go to, but, you know, because then th you would see way too high. And there's got to be a balance in there. So your money is going from a negative zero number to now, let's just use the number 5,000 bucks. Let's just say that's the number. Mm -hmm. Well, you have a dramatic difference. And then prices start falling and your buying power goes in and inflation goes away. And when you start seeing that stuff, you're going to go, stop focusing on all that payback. The world is never fair. It never will be fair. It if you're in the middle of a war and the and the war runs over your property, they don't ever pay you back. It's just part of of the thing that happens to us. And this is the that's sucky, but the world isn't fair. So that's just a way of looking at that. No, I appreciate I appreciate all the uh, observations. You know, just a couple of points to, to what you were saying, Dr. Scott, you know, Russia, a very valid point that you're making, because we we reported a while ago that in 2022, they were the world's most wealthiest nation. And they are obviously the figurehead of BRICS, as you said. And this year, they're poised again by the IMF now to be one of the wealthiest nations because they're, we've talked about a while ago, but just as a reprise for people, I think that Russia at current is... Uh, fifth in the world in, in gold reserves, and I think seventh or eighth in foreign currency reserves. And you can see why they're tentacling around right. you know, the BRICS nations. And we see what they're making a concerted effort to do with Iraq and all of that. I think most people are fairly aware of that at this point. Sure. Uh, go ahead. You were gonna say no, no. I, I think one of the things you got to look back, you got to look back through history and kind of, I mean, when John was talking about the wars, do you know that the Philippines was taken over during World War II? And there was the, there's the, in 1942, we have the Bataan Death March. And you go, and, and you see all this focus, right? Um, and uh, MacArthur, I was almost blanked his name out, gets kicked out, right? So he's, you know, he gets kicked out and he goes, I'm going to return. So he goes to Australia and plans out, you know, the island hopping up the way, all the way to the Philippines. Now, here's a funny one. How come MacArthur gets off his boat? It's the only island he does this. Gets off the boat and he's got wet pants as he walks up there. And in, when, when they get into the Philippines, and I think it's late 43 when this occurred. And, and why was the Philippines so important? It's because the anti-cabal, this is the Scott term, you would call them the White Hats. The anti-cabal had massive amounts of gold in the Philippines. Mm. And that was part of this wealth of Solomon that they had. And so the cabal was trying to get it. Why is it that in late 50s, 8, whatever, um, the French start invading uh, Vietnam? And then later in the 60s, and I mean, this war goes on for a long time, right? To the yeah. 60s. We, we, you know, the Americans are in there and, you know, different kind of organizations are in Vietnam. And even rightly, the, the very young baby boomers are going, why are we in Iraq? Or excuse me, uh, Vietnam. I'm like, why are we in Vietnam? And it's a great point. Why were we in Vietnam? Now, they vilified the, the veterans who were there, which is a horrible thing to do because they're the young kids, too. They're just part of the war. You can't, like, vilify them. It was the government doing it. It's because Vietnam has so 
much a, a reserve of, of, of monies that, that are out there. Mm -hmm. Zimbabwe has found $13 trillion of diamonds just recently. And you're going, that isn't, that isn't a, 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 just an outside occurrence. Why did we invade Iraq post 9-11? Had no, supposedly had nothing to do with this because we were trying to get in there and get and revalue their currency and knock them down to a nothing uh, land. Mm -hmm. Why Afghanistan? These are, and why were the Russians in the, in the early eighties going into Afghanistan or the Soviets, excuse me. And then Americans go over and go in there, there again and get all jiggy on that place. It's because they're trying to take, that was part of the poppy seed. That was part of the, the CIA and all the growth that they could do. This is how they do it, guys. And once you start seeing it from a financial landscape and we start giving that money with the help of all the white hat generals and all the white hat people, we give it back to that nation so that she can be she can be have the ability to grow, just like Canada, just like Australia. I want her to be independent and strong on her own because the Jasara law says, if you start getting jiggy with another nation, all the other nations around you are coming for you. And that's part of the point that they want to talk about. Yeah, absolutely. Well, well sum summarized as well, Scott. And just to add a couple of touch points to what you what you just said, going back to a minute for Puerto Rico, uh, you know, most people don't realize, like you said, why are they not a state? Because they're tied to the foreign corporation known as DC. And they were originally, as you know, most people probably know this, some may not, I don't know where everybody's at with this, but they were tied to ATF, alcohol, tobacco, and firearms. So originally they were considered a luxury tax. It, it, you know, they tested it to see if it'd stick around and we know the rest. And we've been trying to untentacle ever since then. You were talking about your friend and the IRS agent. I also too had a friend who used to work for the IRS. And I asked her, I said, is there a law on the books that says individuals have to pay taxes? She actually left the IRS because she could not find one single law because the, under the constitution, taxes are voluntary, right? In terms well, of they, income, they actually tax. say it differently. If you look at, I'm, I'm, I'm going to blank this out. I'm going to get this wrong maybe, but I think it's I-9, but then there's also the, the W-4 that you're looking at. Uh -huh. It actually class, it, it calls you, it says, are you a citizen of the uh, of the United States? And this right. is this goes to Russell J. Gould's amazing capabilities of understanding the grammatic language that was screwed up by the cabal in the 1868 um, change. Over all they did in this in this 1868 landmark case is they just changed little wordings instead of the Constitution for the United States. It was Constitution of the United States. Correct. All they did is just, just repoint it over here. Mm -hmm. And it was a tiny little change. And when you read it, I remember reading it just very recently. And I'm like, this is like, this looks like a Grammarly kind of, of change. And, mm -hmm. and what it is, is just takes away from one and goes to the other direction. And that's the corporation that was fully set up. And it took a long while too, um, 1871, before the corporation was really set up. And so this is this slow burn all the way through to build up to where we are here. Absolutely. And like you said, you know, there's power in words, right? There's a difference between legal and lawful. There's a difference between uh, the, the law versus the color of law. It's all manipulation. That's why our name is all in capital letters, because right. they think of us as a corporation, even though we're not, because they consider us dead at sea, you know, maritime law and all that. And then backing up to what you were saying about Zimbabwe, They've also, as, as you've seen, we reported, I uh, think whatever it was, a week or so ago, they have every intention to back all of their bonds and dollars, all their money under Chamisa when he returns after their elections this summer in gold asset because they have the gold. They've even marketed their, to your point about metric system, they've marketed their digital tokens 7.37 kilograms. So they've already been designating a measure of weight. So we can see this thing start to proliferate more and more and more. So um, I guess the next question, Dr. Scott, I would have for you, now that we've sort of established some of the parameters, uh, can you touch a little bit on the geopolitical benefits of, of Nasara as it relates to uh, establishing sovereignty with the nations you were talking about, removing banker wars? There's a big contention about uh, people will be going back to their home countries because they'll be free and prosperous. 
Let right. me get your thoughts on that. Yeah, see, and I, I hear this all the time. Like one of our biggest problems, I know John gets this too. I mean, like people like go and, yeah, but what about the illegals? You know, are you know, do they have to get go home to get their Jasara? And I'm like, okay, let's let's put it this way. I, I want you to th- forget about the ones that are invading. Okay, we've got an invading force, but I want you just to focus on people who are just pure illegals in this country. Okay, and which has been a common theme and common problem for a long time. Why are they here? They're here for a better opportunity to be able to survive without, you know, someone trying to, you know, rape and pillage them in essence. Okay. So that's, that was, that's part of it. Number one, do, if, if conditions were growing enough in the sovereign state of Honduras, make up a name of a country you want to pick. If in Honduras, that country raises up its standard where, you know, you know, she can go back to Honduras why wouldn't she wouldn't want to be around her family? Of course she would. It's it's going to be like a no-brainer kind of response. And so we'll see a flood of people coming out of Texas and Oklahoma and all these other Arizona regions, and they're going to go right back through, and they're you know, or we'll have them on boats or whatever. It'll be a real gentle kind of system of saying, let's go back, okay? And then. And it's because it's not just for like their money issues, but what happens is that they can be back with their families and be back in the language that they want to do instead of having to do, you know, the other, you know, cruddy jobs that are happening out there. Um, It does mean that we're going to have to figure out how to deal with, you know, people being in America. And but here's the reality. Instead of the conversation about citizenship, it'll be much more about like, um, in, in essence, if someone wanted to get away from Spain and wanted to come over here, he's going to like, you know, adopt the new country and, and be a part of it. Um, the Bible calls it, you know, the ambassador level as we are ambassadors for Christ. And we're just like here, but our home is in heaven, uh, Hebrews 9.27. Um, we're just ambassadors. We're, we're in essence... Do you know that as believers, you're illegals on this planet because your home is really in heaven. And so the reality is that, you know, when my father-in-law was crying and wanted to go home as his dementia was getting him and all this other stuff, he was talking about going back home to be in his real place. Okay. So what we're going to see is, is a migration away from that. But the ones that stay, like, and we have people this all the time. What about someone who stayed here for 20 years? Well, let's make them legal citizens, you know? And that's cool. I, I don't have a problem with that as long as they're not criminals, you know? But, but you're going to see one of the things that I have um, asked this question of, of my own military contacts is um, how do we know about that? Did you know that Trump actually stipulated this six months ago in his little tiny videos? If you ever see those, like they're two minute videos. I mean, they're super short. They're not even a TikTok level thing, right? And what he says is that we actually know where all the drug lords are. And he was Mm -hmm. talking about this and we're going to send him back. What he's saying is the White Hats have actually tagged these idiots. And and so we're talking about the really gross ones. I mean, the bad ones. Uh, the uh, what is that? The uh, thirteen gang. Oh, MS thirteen. Yeah, MS thirteen. Thank you. Sorry, I was like, oh. Um, and and so you, you you know that gang and those kinds of people. It's going to be real simple because there is a tagging that we've done to them. Okay. So in essence, like the boots that you know all those all those uh, all the cabal have been wearing, like like Joe Biden wore that, and a whole bunch of other people. There is a tagging system that we have on them, and we just pick them up and boop, you're gone. And so, and you ask the question, why have we not had a war that we were really out and doing? Why doesn't Joe Biden actually create a war and that we have an extern, external war? It's because he's not allowed to, be, well, he's not the CIC, but he's not allowed to even really send real levels of troops in there because they need to stay right here in America. Because when this thing gets a little hotter at mm-hmm. the EBS, mm-hmm. 
we got to take them out and we also got to like calm the people with that. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, before we go to our next point, Dr. Scott, you and I <laughs> talked about you were, you were uh, articulating some biblical uh, passages. So I'm just going to add to the cachet what you were saying. And, and before we do that, actually, before I forget, um, what we're really talking about when you talk about um, repositioning people into their rightful countries where many of them want to be, some want to stay, some don't, sure. depending on their situation, right. you know, whatever, it's case by case. Uh, we're really talking about nationalism, right? Nationalism here in America and throughout the world. That's what it boils down to. Um, the quick passage I was going to read is you and I talked about this three years ago when we were, uh, and people can watch that video to, to get more of the specific passages, but one of my favorites is Leviticus 25, 11 through 12, which, which uh, dovetails perfectly with what you said. And it says, this 50th year will be a jubilee for you. During that year, you must not plant your fields or store away any of the crops that grow on their own. Don't gather the grapes from your unpruned vines. It will be a jubilee year. You must keep it holy, but you may eat whatever the land produces on your own. In this jubilee year, each of you may return to the land that belonged to your ancestors. So it's, you know, falling in line a lot with what you're talking about. Well, the, the point you just said is so beautiful that you get to eat what comes from your land. Yeah. That is a deletion of an IRS taking mm -hmm. your money. And then you go back home to your land, which is what John is talking about. That is a, a conversation of that. Um, there's another verse, and I'm, I do, I can't remember it. I got it in my iPad over there, but sitting over there, I would have sure. to like pull it out. But, and, and I always screw this verse up. So please forgive me because it's really a weird constructed um, sentence. Okay. As an English major, as a writer, I get like picky on sentences. Okay. So it's a very weird construction, but basically it says those who collect this, you know, really ugly, I'm going to say the Scott version, really ugly amount of interest um, are collecting it for one who's kind to the poor. Mm. And you're going, what? Basically what happens there is those who are doing this stuff will not get to benefit from that. And, and people go, well, aren't we in the end times because of that? I go, no. Do you know that in the end times, in the, th the third seal, which is pretty Prosperity. early on in that, the first seal starts with the, with the Antichrist, okay? We don't have the Antichrist yet. We're not talking about a beast system. When the first seal comes in is the Antichrist, and only Jesus is allowed to introduce the Antichrist. And one thing that, that happens in eschatology that what most people do, this is my background, in eschatology is they want to say that the cabal or these cadre of bad boys are going to rise up the dude. And that's not what the verse says in Revelation 6, 1 and 6, 2. It says that Jesus has control to open up the seals. He is introducing the Antichrist. The third seal is what we would call hyperinflation without getting into it heavily. We have a form of hyperinflation, but what I would say to you right now is it's um a type and shadow of this. Because if we really had hyperinflation, they would take more and more of your tax dollars every day to pay for that. And by the way, when Obama was in office from George Bush, we had a growth of IRS out outtake of your money. If, if you had like three deductions, <clears throat> you just do three standard deductions. I watched it go up as a business owner and as a as a person that enters in all of my payroll to these companies, right? I would see it from December 31st to the next next year and I would start seeing it go down, but as soon as Trump got in office, it started going back in. I mean like you were getting more money, right? And do you know that even when Biden got in office in 20 January of 2021, which is the normal time frame that I expected it to go back up. They, they still took out less. They took out less in 22, in 23, and in 24. How come they're taking out less IRS money, but hyperinflation is there? It's because we have a faux or fake, in essence, hyperinflation. Now, it's affecting us. No good, no me wrong. But if it was affecting us and they don't have any money, they're not getting any money. They're not collecting more in taxation. Mm. So it's it's like this fakey kind of thing. Now, in the tribulation, everyone is going to be poor. That's what it says. 
other than the ultra, ultra wealthy. And then by the end of the tribulation, everyone's down to nothing with that. So what these verses are, are, and John and I fully kind of investigate it. He's done it on his own too. Those are pre tribulational verses they have to accomplish in this time frame they're not for the millennial reign they're not for the tribulation they're pre-tribulation and which is totally weird you know the wealth of the wicked is stored up for the righteous it's such a strange verse because we've never seen it happen it's mm -hmm. coming yeah yeah and we're we're seeing it we're you're right we're seeing it in living color kind of coming right <laughs> at us almost like a car coming at you from the other side of the freeway uh, so let's, with that in mind, let's pivot, Scott, a little bit to, uh, you've gotten over the years, as I have testimonials from people privately, Hey, I got my credit card, my mortgage, my, you know, I called up, my medical bills are gone. They don't even have an account for me. They don't know what I'm talking about. You know, so, uh, just, if you wouldn't mind just sharing a few, uh, excerpts of testimonies you've, you've seen of debt forgiveness. Well, you know, what, what was weird is that, I mean, debt forgiveness just didn't happen. I mean, the only way debt forgiveness ever has occurred, and by the way, the farmers did it to the Farm Bureau in the 70s. And by the way, did you know my father-in-law knew those guys in the oh. northern Colorado area? No, oh, that's interesting. God has been, I, I can't even explain oh. to you, God has been preparing me. Do you know that they were thinking about what the White Hats, they didn't call them that, they didn't know who these were. They were going to bring in money to help the, the world. And this was back in the 80s. I'm like, oh my gosh, you mean that was out there as a uh, concept? It's because what, the, what they did is that when you violate contract law, debts get wiped out because it's, it's between two parties. And when you violate those laws, that's where it comes in. Donald Trump in the executive order 13818 that happens in December-ish, -ish, November, December 17, ever since that time frame, we've been ripping away money from those, those, those idiots who are doing that stuff. And, and they're selling out their companies left and right, all of them with this. Now, in uh, around um, August, September of 2020, all of us started noticing crazy things. Um, one of the first guys, kind of a, a YouTuber a bit, had had mentioned, and he showed his whole credit report. And I'm like, okay. And then I started seeing people come in. And one of my favorite ones is guy, she's a woman comes to my little uh, Nassara meeting, so I first did them, right? And, and she's telling the story, right? She totally is up, up to date, right? And the guy has just bought a Toyota truck. And he's calling the bank, where's my payment? And he's freaking out, like, where, what are you going to do? Get it to me. You're not taking my truck. And I mean, he's having a how. And the, the banker goes, I don't know. Your payment just went away. What do you mean? And he's just, and she's <laughs> telling a story. And we're all bawling in the room. And the reality is that's actually going to happen in just a little bit for the unawakened. Because they're going, you're taking my truck. No. They don't take your property. It just gets wiped out. And so I started collecting. I wish I collected all of them, <clears throat> but they would tell me and show me like pictures of their credit report and the, the whole suckers, you know, cut off. And so as I started seeing this, you know, you see something before that doesn't happen and then it happens afterward. You're going, okay, what occurred? So truthers have to be researchers. So we started backing this sucker up and realized the QFS came in to effect all around late fourth, basically third to fourth quarter, 2020. Mm -hmm. And here's what happens. The Fed, under the conversation of your routing numbers in your bank accounts, was, is always how it finds every single transaction that you ever do. By the way, when they talked about we're going to track your $600 transactions. They already do it. They're doing it, yeah. By the way, and, and, and as a business owner, if I deposit more than $10,000, it, it actually activates a DEA report. The bank will do it. And so, and the, they will kind of go away. And so 
what D, I mean, uh, what druggies and all the other ones do is they deposit like 990, uh, 9,900, 9, right? Or something less than that 10,000 thing. It's because it triggers it through your routing number. So this is how they have connection to everything you do. Credit cards, everything else that happens out there, it comes that way. Now, <clears throat> at the same time, the QFS started showing up. Now, if you have a server running, you, you have this old server. And by the way, the Fed has known for a long time. We've known for a long time, the, you know, this sucker is really old. It's like an 8086 computer, okay? And that sucker really not working. So the great reset was the replacement of it. Just the logical, easy replacement of that thing so that we would they would have a system of, of much more efficient, you know, tracking of monies, right? <clears throat> but Trump cut it off left this really unworking system, bad transmission kind of thing, and had the QFS running at the same time. And it started watching transactions. And what happens when you have a digital nature of a, of a transaction? Look, again, we're not talking about CBDCs. Okay, that's, Trump's actually talked against that. Mm -hmm. That's the fake thing that's never going to happen ever, okay? But- <clears throat> What happened is that the, the QFS started sampling. And, and that's why um, my sister actually had a tractor. And I'm going to get the, the amounts wrong, but something around 7,500 bucks she still owed. She had a $500 payment and it went away. It was mm -hmm. like, and so that was, you know, she had been awakened before this, but, you know, mm -hmm. she was way like, okay, baby. Um, and that's one of the things that happens. Now, when we go into the goldback system, right, after an EBS and we go into this kind of thing, what will happen for everyone within, within minutes, what they do is the, the QFS is there. Don't worry about it. They just turn off the Fed. It's right. not like, in, in essence, activate. It's just turning off the Fed so it can't do anything. So the QFS is the only thing left in that. And by the way, that's what you do with the server, right? If you have an old server, you leave them both on and you turn off the old one. Right. Um, when you're and then you're ready to go. And you and you because you you've transitioned in into that kind of thing. And so that's really how it works. Now the real people think about like when they push the button, what they're doing is pushing the button to kill off those other people. So the reason why the the QFS Nasara hasn't occurred yet is we're still under a war. We've had a war for a long time, but every single time that they've wanted to have it done, they were catching more of the cabal. One of the things we actually found out about hmm, four or five months ago, something like that, there was a huge sting and no one knows about it. Basically, it was hundreds of, of American bankers who were trying to get into the QFS mm -hmm. and those guys were arrested. But the interesting part is the Iraqi bankers. There was at least 150 Iraqi bankers that were trying to get into the QFS. They caught them and we suspect, we don't know for sure, but we suspect they hung them right then. Mm -hmm. That is how really serious they were. they were looking at that kind of thing. So this is that kind of response of, hey, man, we're, we're catching them. And so what happens is the cabal actually becomes fully bankrupt at that moment. They have no access to money. I mean, they're sitting there with monopoly money trying right. to pay for things. And, and, and by the way, do you know that um, there's a um, TV series? It's called Mr. Robot. Mm -hmm. In the fourth season, they did this it's literally done and it was it's a fictional point and and the cabal was freaking out because all their money went to zero and it was redistributed out to the people well you're just talking and this is before we had you know the executive order anyone knew what was happening it's what it's what they always want i mean the cabal wants to do on the reverse with the cbdc's they want to take it from us and right. give it to them but in fiction, they turn it around and go the other direction. That's just how they do it. Well, it's predictive programming, right? Hollywood has to tell us what they're going to do before they try to do it. It's just like, to your point, Heyman on the gallows. 
Um, one quick uh, thing before we, we wrap up for today, because there's we'll, obviously you and I can go on for days and days in a good way, but there's there's so much to extrapolate. It takes a while. So we'll we'll pick this up again next month in part two and, and beyond now that we're reconnected, thankfully. Um, but to your point about, um, you know, language and subtleties, you know, before uh, anybody who's dealt with the IRS, whether it's on a tax return or you're disputing something. Uh, I actually, it's in my safe, so I didn't have the time to get, I'll, I'll make sure to bring it out next time. But I actually, I had a business five years ago that I had closed. And during the pandemic, you know, we went through this little hibernation period, which we know all about that. Obviously we lived it. A year later, they were trying to like, oh, you, you owe money for this and that. I'm like, no, I have no contract with you. Show me where I have a contract. And I don't consent because everything's free will as, as whether you're Christian or not, we call it free will. Non-believers call it consent. Fine, you know, six and one half dozen. But it's all by consent, and we are now learning how to re-exercise our free will thereof for the good over the evil. To as you know, point being, when you read the headliner of their their stationery, it says in in darker uh, lighting, like lowercase and and less emphasis, Department of the Treasury. Then it says the IRS. That happened to your point in 2020, and it's just been rolling out. It's and, and I think it's been happening a little. I, I think I saw some forms that were a little earlier than 2020, but it okay. did fully come in. But the reality was, and and I I think that I, I found a couple of forms that that were in around 2017 that changed or 2018 that changed that way, okay. because when I looked at some older forms, I didn't see that on there. Now someone's gonna like argue with me, and they found a form. Okay, fine. But right. the reality is. The IRS pays directly to the treasury. They take their little cut and then the money goes out to the Fed. Mm -hmm. So in essence, they are, they're just trying to make it like look legal. Okay. Don't, don't get too sideways on that stuff, but they are what, what will happen to the IRS is that we believe that, you know, they'll knock them down to maybe 10% of the size and they will do a, a sales tax, a federal sales tax. Mm -hmm. So it, we think it's about a 14% sales tax. Right. And so you still have city, state, and and um, uh, county tax. I'm trying to remember it all. And then you'll have a federal sales tax, but it will only be on new items. And people right. go, well, that's not fair. Well, we're not talking about medical stuff or, or food or other things. Right. By the Cars way, homes. in Oklahoma, they are actually killing a whole bunch of taxation on food and other things. Mm -hmm. They're operating with these states you don't realize they're operating under Nassara conversations. They're killing off things left and right. right. What that sales tax would be is for someone, I mean, if they want to go buy a new car, you know, and they want that, that capability, well, guess what? You're going to pay for it. You don't care. That's sales tax is called use tax. It's the only tax that is legal. Whereas the other one steals from only the middle class and the poor. Because do you know that, that someone who has is very wealthy up in the you know tens of and hundreds of millions, what will what they do is that they will create corporation layers so that they can filter down. One mm -hmm. loses a hundred thousand, the other you know gains a hundred thousand. It's a net zero down to the thing. It's called flow through. Okay. And and so what happens is that we're gonna see. All of that stuff go away. So I think even PLs, profit and losses, are going to look so radically different. Mm -hmm. And you know, I was I was required by this friend of mine um, back in 2011 to build a company. When we were building that sovereign organization, we were building it without um, um, without any EBITDA, without write offs in that way. It was really weird. Um, but it's a reflection of what we're about ready to see. Absolutely. And then just real quick, Scott, to your point, you have Texas and Tennessee and probably 30 plus other states, maybe more, who are going to their own digital gold back asset token. Because another thing that President Trump did is, is he allowed the states to secede from the union, you know, with their basically, you know, because it's a long gated conversation, but, you know, you're, it's like we have federal and state tax, right? Well, under right. the corporation. You know, so people think of themselves as citizens of the United States and then residents of a particular state. But in reality, when we go back to nationalism, you're seceding away from the union of the corporation and just being in the state in which you were born or where you choose to reside for the remainder of your days. 
So, you know, these states are being empowered to your point about like Oklahoma breaking away. I, I think Oklahoma, if I'm not mistaken, is going to be on the list to get their own gold token because they're right within that red state region that's so heavily concentrated in the southeast region and Midwest. So it's, it's but but I think the the thing that's cool about what you're talking about, and I want to just sure. caution you guys, is it's not CBDCs. Okay, realize right. right. that what he's talking about is a distributed ledger system yeah. that is under a blockchain kind of thing. Okay, right. and the blockchain was created at the same time when Bitcoin was created. That was when the QFS was created in the, around 2009. Okay. This is this was created because they had to come up with a system that could go around the corporation, okay? But what happens, you have to understand that every single transaction outside of cash is a digital transaction. You write me a check, if you write my business a check for 100 bucks, I don't take that I take that check and go deposit it it gets translated through, which I think XRP and XLM mm -hmm. is mm -hmm. going to be a part of that, of a fee-based system, which by the way, if you think you're, if you're XRP, XLM, I don't believe that they'll go back because, and guess what? And they get all mad at me. I'm going, you know, you're going to make a massive amount of money by those little fee points that connects bank A to bank B. You are going to make a bunch. And that is a fully privatized, fully legal thing inside the constitution. Sure. And so what happens is that you're, if you write a check, I don't take it out as cash and then give it back to the bank as cash. I just take it directly through. So we, it, it's a digital transaction, just like a, just like a Zelle, you know, transaction, just like a credit card, just like all, or, or even if I do a transfer from bank to the, that corporation I'm paying for with that. That's what John's talking about. So you have to have a distributed ledger toward the, the, the price of gold based upon what treasury does. And so then they have to know, well, this $1 means X amount of gold. And that's what the distributed ledger is supposed to do. But it's blockchain so that you can look backward, 50 transactions, 50 transactions either way, to actually find out what's going on with that. That's what he's meaning. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for that. So uh, Dr. Scott, uh, as always with our shows, as you know, we uh, we give you parting thoughts and where people can, uh, can find your work. So I will turn that over to you. Yeah, so I mean, one thing, I'm going to be real, real honest. I mean, we have had a major problem with this QFS crypto crap that people are buying, thinking that they're buying the crypto, right? You've had this on, under you too. They're faking my image. They fake all these people's images. I mean, I, I did some basic research uh, and on TikTok, there's like 250 different Dr. Scott's in different ways. It's not me. And when I try to get them removed, they go, there's nothing wrong with that. I'm like, that is faking me, okay? The reality is it's a simple way to find me, drscottyoung.com. And like my Twitter is at Dr. Scott Young. TikTok, at Dr. Scott Young. I mean, like, and I'm not even on fake book. So I don't even do any of that kind of stuff. But I'm just telling you, it's a simple way of doing this. And so, you, by the way, you cannot get into the QFS early. Okay, don't worry. You don't have to pay for it. It's like your Experian credit report. You didn't sign up for it, but they're putting you in that system. Okay. The QFS is, is going to be fine, guys. It's a trust system. So I just want to say, don't get into all that stuff. Go directly to, you know, the, my website and you can find all the different places you can find stuff for me. Excellent. And on our end, just to give you a couple, you folks a couple of bit of notes, my <laughs> audience knows this just to make your audience aware we talked a lot about currencies and things like that. I wasn't necessarily on the agenda. It just was very organic. But um, if anybody is looking to get currencies or up their position, we'll leave a link in the description for that. And also, uh, we are creating a new channel that because we're dealing with some of the same issues and challenges you are, Dr. Scott, of being shadow banned and number manipulation and deep fakes with AI. And so in an effort to combat that, we're creating a channel called the Real World Academy. And we're going to be doing courses exactly like this, helping people get out of the corporation, get out of the traditional construct, which we've all been brainwashed in, ways to make streams of income, connect with other business owners, develop channel partnerships. If you have an idea that's complementary to a business owner, 
and just connect with other patriots as well and other other Christians and create subgroups like a Discord would do. Uh, we're we're going to have a uh, channel that's being developed for that, and we'll also leave that link in the description as well. Dr. Scott, always, brother, a pleasure to have you. We look forward to having you once again and just taking this to the next level. We really appreciate all the efforts you're doing out there. So God bless you and um, take care. We'll see you soon. Thanks, guys. Have fun.